Clad. Episode 2, Tristan Cochran. Here we go. Get us. Hey. Yeah. There's a wee crowd building already, so we're gonna see that. Yeah, yeah. Right, let me get it. Come on. Just, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're just gonna give him a good. We're, we're gonna give him a good send off. Let's just say uh, Tristan's gonna bless him here. You. Tristan for a vigor for tonight. He's gonna uh, give him a bit of holy water and shit. Holy water. <laughs> Introduce yourself, tell us who you are, <laughs> what you do. I'm a part time butcher and I love the right women. <laughs> <laughs> you'll probably be asking where the hell are you okay so I'm currently on a ferry from Dublin over to Holyhead going over to Wales I'll be traveling over to England to see my friend Dan Scanlon who sorted me out with a few gigs what a fucking what a journey and a half Jesus Christ arrived into Dublin I didn't have any data if I would have been one minute later I would have missed the entire trip and everything. Uh, absolute fucking madness. But uh, I'm in the, the room here and I would have been kicking myself to be missing this. Everything here. So fucking cool. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it's fucking class. And um, it's nice to go on a journey, I guess. Put yourself, uh, put yourself out of your comfort zone. It's not something that I thought I would do in such a short amount of time is to travel but I need to get used to this kind of thing I suppose because uh, it comes with the whole nature of DJ therefore um, I'm gonna have to get used to traveling so it's good experience as well as um, you know I've been talking to Dan uh, Dan hope you're doing well I'm over in Manchester for for over a year now just back and forth on Instagram and you know chatting away so it'd be nice to see him as well, uh, see what he's like in person, I'm sure he's dead on and stuff. And just do something different, you know. I mean, I, rem I remember starting to produce, you know, when I was 16, 17 years of age. I went to university and uh, I didn't like it at all. I don't like food, and science and nutrition. I didn't like it at all. And uh, I dropped out. Everyone just said to me that you're just going to fail. You have to have a degree to have any form of you know good job or whatever I'm telling you here now that if you have something that you're passionate about something that could, you can give 
10 minutes to a day, just motivation comes from what you've done in the past. So uh, I don't care if it's uh, you know building sheds, but keep at it and only give it 20, 30 minutes a day. My, my dream was just always to not have a job, not have to lie to myself that um, you know I need a job to bridge the gap. I don't lie to myself. You don't need to. Just work hard at something and whenever you feel like it's the time for you to go, then go for it, honestly. Because you won't regret it. Five months from now, I was let's say at the lowest point in my life where I thought that there was, there was basically no getting out of it. Girlfriend pregnant, basically homeless, running around the car, getting Chinese's every day and trying to make things happen for us, but it just wasn't working. It all starts from the first day when you say, I've had enough and I just want to do something with my life. Just want to do something. Ask yourself the question, not um, if you can't do it, but how can you do it? Break it down into 10 sections. 50 sections. It's better to do little things every day in order to get towards that goal rather than just set yourself a goal way out there. But you know you're not going to take the steps to do it. For example, I've you know, heard this quoted in a lot of different things, but you know, if you, say if you wanted to, to work out and say if you wanted to get fit, you go to the gym the first day, you come back home, you see no difference. The, the point is if you put in a little work every day, six months or a year down the line, you will see the difference. But it won't just happen the first day you go in. So if you have to be just patient, but you have to be disciplined enough to know that if you just do the little things every single day, six months or a year down the line, you will definitely see a difference then. But you have to break it down into little chunks. I heard Pitbull was saying in one of the quotes, you know, there is no magic bullet. There is no one week lose two stone or one week like fucking four stone or whatever you see out there. The only thing there is is hard work. Just work hard. I hope this does motivate some people. Like, no matter what situation you're in, there, just keep going no matter what and set yourself little goals every day. Just stick to them. Don't, don't let anyone tell you that it's not possible. It's those same people will be the people the fur down the line will tell you, oh, done so well, blah, 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 blah. But whatever you're trying to achieve, they'll never support you. Because, you know, people can't see what you can see. People can't dream what you can dream. The same people that'll tell you it's not possible or there's only an up point, not whatever percentage of, say, being a great DJ, say, being famous, say, are the same people that are going to be stuck in the same shit life. So my advice to you would be, be around people that motivate you and motivate people yourself. You know, if you're in a position like, you know, if I met a DJ that was just starting off or whatever, I would do everything in my power to help them, to give them the right advice or whatever, because, you know, I've had certain people, shout out to Darren Wallace, um, had a few tunes on SoundCloud and you know, was getting a couple of likes and stuff. And he was the one that sort of, you know, played my tracks at clubs. I would ask, you know, any chance of a gig here and there, um, things like that. And he sort of guided me. Uh, uh, he still guides me today. He's still my role, role model today, you know. So sh shout out to you, Dan, because you know, you're one of the people that inspired me to do better. So find people that can be your mentors. Find people that inspire you. Find people that, you know, um, uh, you aspire to be like because if you haven't got that then um, what have you got really do you know what I mean um, my advice to you is just whatever you're doing is just keep at it and don't be so hard on yourself um, you know if you don't achieve it if you don't achieve what you set out to achieve but you're closer to that goal you know, give yourself some space, uh, you know, re reward yourself, you know. So, um, yeah. Anyway, that was a good chat. So, um, I'll see you in a wee bit.
Right guys, so we update on the situation. Um, obviously you missed a lot from what happened in the last kind of kind of day or so, but I just didn't have time to sit down and you know, really talk about it. So basically landed holy head and uh, went on from there, drove to a place called Warrington, which I'm at right now. It's a wee premier in hotel. And uh, I'm playing in a, in a warehouse, which I will show you today. And I mean, it's it's fucking huge, it's massive. Um, really, really good experience. I think yesterday was kind of a, a tough one, that's why I didn't film any videos or anything like that. Um, literally, you know, the night before I only had two hours of sleep. That's the only sleep I got in like the last 24 hours. And then, uh, or for that day even. And um, then after that, I had to drive from Hollyhead to Warrington and I literally had about 15 minutes to get food and stuff and then I had to go straight to the warehouse at 12 o'clock to um, to play a set and I'm basically working from 12 o'clock until 12 o'clock at night so I was glad to get a uh, to get a sleep after that. Getting paid to be doing what you love doing and get paid good money for it is you can't match that feeling because no matter how tired I was yesterday, um, uh, the fact that you're doing it for yourself, the fact that it's just so refreshing. I'm working for me. I'm working towards my dream, which is what I've always wanted to do. An awesome feeling. I would, you know, greatly say if if you have something like that in your mind, really consider working for yourself because that's the best feeling. That's one uh, the best feelings. Um, so. Yeah, go for it. You got to show me love. Two, and uh, basically just do the last gig now until uh, we go back home tomorrow so finishing strong looking forward to going home obviously it's been a mental week uh, couldn't have wished for better to be honest um, big thanks Dan again Dan Scanlon from Manchester for giving me these gigs always gonna be grateful and he pulled me out uh, of a bad situation big time so thank you very much Little peas, bad boys. How are you? All good? Hi! All good. Hello, buddy, how are you? Thank you. So, basically, if you can see this, I'm like right up there. So, this is like the warehouse. Fucking, uh, once again, massive. Um, yeah, glass spot. The, uh, i be glad to get in the fucking hotel after I'm done this. Get in the hotel, get a good night's sleep. And, uh. So. The sexy herself, Rachel's pride and joy. Day one now. And uh, the boat, the boat cross, crossing won't be that. It's, it's pretty quick, like. Yeah, you know. it'll be a flash. I booked myself. Uh, I booked myself one of those chairs. Never gonna believe this, hey? Did you make it? No, they wouldn't let me on. You're fucking lying. No, I swear, no, I, I, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be saying this.
Oh, fuck you. Why, why the fuck did you say that? Why did you say that? So first of all, thanks very much if you made it this far. And uh, I've only got a few more minutes left here just to do some Q&A questions that uh, I asked you guys. I'm going to just go through these very quickly. So um, the first one is, can you do the hand thing? Um, yes, indeed, I can do the hand thing. So... Uh, this is just like a inside joke that me and my friend Jack have and basically we used to go out to nightclubs and do this like stupid fucking dance move thing. It's like a it's like a funny video on YouTube. I'll link it down below. It's <laughs> fucking uh yeah, it's hilarious. So anyway, what made you get into doing music and did you not like being a chef? It wasn't so much that I didn't like being a chef, it was more that you just couldn't find the time to balance things. You'd be working from, you know, near enough twelve o'clock until 10, 11, maybe half 11 sometimes, it was mad. I enjoyed the company and everything, all the staff were really nice, but I just don't, never thought that you got the recognition that you deserved, you know, doing your work. Whereas with music, you just, you know, you get a lot of perks with it, you get to travel. You, you could do that as a chef as well, like if you really want to be good, but I just love cooking for my family. I love cooking at home, and that's why I decided to be a chef, but obviously it just wasn't for me long term. And um, I applaud people who can do it because you really have to be a strong person. It's taught me to stand up for myself and stuff. It's basically just for the amount of time you put into it, I don't think you get out as much as you would out of the music per se. So that's why I just decided to pursue the music career instead. Uh, do you like dogs or cats? Aye, dogs, 100%, 100%. Um, never really had any good experience with cats. Always get fucking scratched and stuff, and they always run away from me, so fuck that. <laughs> and my dream dog is like a golden Labrador. So, like, as soon as I get the money, I'm, I'm definitely buying one. Like, as soon as I get, like, a garden and stuff, I'd love to buy a golden Labrador and take it out for walks and stuff. And Anyway, um, next one uh, where can i get your t-shirt basically a t-shirt i've been wearing for most of this video was a craft club t-shirt it's my own brand which i've came up with not too long ago and it's designed for for djs and stuff to wear out it's got a really cool logo at the back and stuff for like dj photos and all so you can just message the instagram page and we'll be able to get you sorted there on to the last question would you dj over in england again uh yeah i would fucking love to like you always see shows over there and you always see these big massive DJs playing over there, student nights and stuff, especially I would love to play at like a packed out like student night or something like that, I think that would be awesome. I really like travelling in England and stuff as well, but the only thing I would say is it's really fucking busy, the traffic's mental over there, so like you waste so much time, I think you need to rent out like a fucking driver or something, so you can get rest because you're in traffic like so much, you know. But I'd love to go over there again, 100%. Anyway guys, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.